Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 4th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan came across an interesting malicious document currently being distributed via email. The initial email actually not really all that significant, just uh, looked like the usual hey, request for quotation style email. The document that was attached claimed to be a Word document, but was actually an RTF, a rich text format document. Now with RTF, uh, you essentially now have the ability to create of these compound documents with various files. In this particular case, the attacker choose to embed for Excel spreadsheets and automatically open them as the document is opened. Reason behind having four Excel spreadsheets is that each one will ask the user to enable macros. So by being sort of bombarded with these dialogues, they're essentially just hoping that the user will give up and eventually click one of the dialog boxes and allow the macros to run. What's also sort of interesting with the particular Excel macro that of course then is being loaded is that it is encrypted three times. Now, of course, the keys are included in the message. So the encryption here is not really done to keep the content secret, but more or less just to make it more difficult to reverse the particular document and also make it more difficult for anti-malware to automatically essentially unpack the malware using the passwords provided. Anti-malware may be able to do this sort of with one layer maybe two, but of course the third layer was then added to make it even more difficult for anti-malware to automatically analyze uh, this particular document. The end goal here apparently is to install Azo RALT on your system. Uh, this is a malware that tends to steal information, so an info stealer. Version of this malware also known to enable remote access systems like uh, for example RDP. And as a part of Apple's update of Mac OS last week, Apple patched an interesting privilege escalation vulnerability in sudo. Yes, yet again, sudo just had a couple of months ago or so this pretty embarrassing vulnerability with uh, the integer overflow that uh, made it relatively easy for users to become root. This new vulnerability doesn't even require that the user is listed in the sudoers file. So typically the command sudo on Unix is used to allow specific users to elevate privileges and either become another user or just run specific commands. When the user tries to do so, they may be prompted for their password again. And uh, in most Unix systems that I'm familiar with, there's no real feedback, but sudo has an option where as you type your password, you'll see asterisks show up on the screen. So this way you kind of know if your keystroke was accepted. The problem is that this fairly simple vulnerability is associated with a buffer overflow and the attacker can escalate privileges and run arbitrary commands as root by sending a large number of characters to sudo. Now to make things work, this feature should actually only work if uh, the user in there actively uses sudo, not if data is being piped uh, from another script or from a file, but uh, so the combination of the buffer overflow and sudo not ignoring input from pipes uh, makes this a rather exploitable vulnerability. Now while Apple found and fixed the flaw in macOS, uh, this also has been fixed for other Unix implementations of uh, sudo. So this is not just a macOS problem. And a security researcher reminds us using the example of TeamViewer why passwords should be hashed and not encrypted. The big advantage of hashing a password is that it can't easily be retrieved even if an attacker has some control over the system. By just stealing the hash from a database, if it's done properly, at the very least uh, you are delaying the attacker from brute forcing the password. 
TeamViewer took the approach of encrypting the password. Now, while they didn't really do the encryption wrong, they used AES, a reasonable good encryption standard. The core problem with encryption of a system like this is that the software verifying the password has then also be able to decrypt the password. And that key has to be stored somewhere within the software. So this is exactly what happened with TeamViewer. This researcher was able to extract the key from memory for TeamViewer. Same key is apparently used on all installs of TeamViewer. So once this key is public now, it's pretty easy for an attacker who has access to the encrypted password that's stored in the registry to decrypt it. They actually didn't end up using the actual AES algorithm, but Rich and Deal, which is sort of the algorithm, the precursor of AES, but uh, pretty close. But the end effect is that an attacker who has access to a rich registry would be able to reverse the password and then could use that password possibly if you, for example, reused it for other systems or for other purposes. Well, and that's it for today. And as usual, if you like this podcast, uh, please uh, tweet about it, post on social media, tell others about the podcast, and let me know if there's anything on this podcast you don't like or if I made any mistakes. That's it for today. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.